Welcome to the board of the Bantu. My name is Isabel and I am your local witch doctor. So I had to come up with an anecdote of the Bantu that I haven't shared with you for years and years and years. So I just said then, I just emptied my mind and I said, the winds, give me one. And the word that floated into my mind was resilient. resilience and how true we who are still standing in africa survived the decimation of slavery right after we thought oh my god we're the lucky ones who were not taken along came the colonizer mass graves as I mentioned in my last videos, torture, the greatest evil that we have never seen. They used to use us as sport for hunting, cut off our heads and hold them up like this. The British, the Belgians, the Germans who committed uh, genocide in in the Germans who committed genocide in Namibia, killing up, killing almost three quarters of a tribe's population. Um, the slavery, the so-called paying of taxes through slavery, where many, many millions of Bantu died building their countries. And then came the wars the wars against colonialism in which hundreds hundreds of thousands of bantu died from the horn of africa to the cape of good hope we were people who've been through it we've had fire we've had water we've had air and we've even had earth but we're still standing one of the Bantu who were taken out in ships and ended up on the other side, Haiti, Jamaica, Cape Verde, um, America, Brazil, Europe, especially the Southerners and the Easterners ended up in Europe. What of them? Their progeny is still standing. That would be you. You out there walking and talking. And if you're sitting here watching me, it means they're calling you home. Yes, they are calling you home, mama. Yes, daddy, they are calling you home. They are saying this is all that direction. That direction. So, this is your board. This is your culture. This is your history. Unchanged. So much has changed, but not this. This board belongs to the Kasa and their baby girl. <laughs> and their baby girl is about to do her thing with her ancestors. The Kasa hail from the Western Cape of South Africa. And they are the shit that walks and talks. The shit that walks and talks. And I wish I could play music for them again. So now, the board of the Bantu is now open. Okay? P. Diddy. We'll be looking at P. Diddy. I just asked my... Uh, uh, Instagram people to ask questions so I am looking at the questions and now I am we all knew let me start from the beginning because I'm over excited today I have a lot of energy it's it's a lot it's a lot I'm trying to keep it down it's a lot okay we all experienced the p diddy and that girl's lawsuit 
and she filed a lawsuit. I don't remember her name. I'm not going to use this phone. I'm not going to use this one. You know, anyway, she filed a lawsuit for uh, $30 million. We finally learned that she didn't quite get it. You know, we are good with numbers. She didn't quite get it. She got below $30 million, but she took it because, you know, it is what it is. What was her name? Uh, P. Diddy's ex-girlfriend. P. Diddy's ex-girlfriend. And now there are all these Asian girlfriends of P. Diddy talking about their relationship with him. Cassie! Thank you! Cassie! Yes. We thought that she didn't get as much as we thought she got. She didn't get 30. She got below half of the 30 right anyway right after that there were a whole bunch of asian girls looking very stoic very straight faced really talking about how p diddy beat them and p diddy did this and p diddy did that to them and we were like to be expected we even saw in the last reading that more will come right yeah pretty much and they have come they have come and we are sitting there and we are looking and we are wondering why P. Diddy had a penchant for females that looked a certain way. And we got an answer because we watched so many of them talking about, or maybe it was one or two or three people to me, that's a lot. And the answer we got simply was that he thought they were submissive. <laughs> like he had it in his head that they are submissive. So basically, he racially profiled them. Yeah. I don't know if you people still remember the time when I read P. Diddy and my ancestor said, this is a nice man. Do you, do you remember that? And my ancestors were like, this is a nice man. If you get to know him, you'll be very happy. Diddy is only good to one type of people. Black women, he is not sleeping with. Oh my God, it's true. It's true. Okay. Diddy is only good to black women he's not sleeping with. Okay. He's not sleeping with you. He is good to you. He is sleeping with you. He is not good to you. Okay. He has a child with you. He is a monster. Okay. So, to, to benefit from Diddy's good side, be a black woman who does not attract him using her, you know, you know, her things, you know, but instead attract him with your brain. Go there and say to him, you know, I have a business and I want to start a business or I'm a hustler. I am busy hustling and don't play with me now. Don't play. Do not play. Do not play. Don't touch that thigh. Do not keep your eyes off my bust. Okay, just keep it. And when I'm walking, don't do the black man thing. Do not look. Okay, because black women are the only women who get more attention from men when they walk away than when we actually come. If you are that kind of female, that kind of no-nonsense female, that kind of female who wants to talk music and just wants to talk music, who wants to, you know, who wants to do business, just wants to do business, who just wants to be his friend oh my god you've struck gold something about it reminds him of his mother and her hustling ways and how tough life was for her oh my god you struck gold okay so where are we where are we so now we know that uh, he has now been accused by a very handsome male of touching him. I didn't read the whole thing, but I know that I opened my Google so that I could get his name. Rodney Lil Rod Jones. I'm just going to say Rodney Jones. Okay, I'm going to leave the Lil Rod, Lil, Lil, Lil Rod out. I'm just going to say Rodney Jones. So now we know that he has been accused by Rodney Jones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not 
For those who constantly like to tell me not to laugh, well, then don't go to Southern Africa because they are a bunch of laughing, you know, um, some women. But that's not it. This is how I. This is how I process shock. And this is how I process my strong emotions. I laugh. Anyway, Rodney Jones accused a. Uh, uh, Diddy of sexually abusing him. He also accused another man, a major star of sexually. I read it. Uh, I read it, but I really wasn't paying attention. So he also accused one of Diddy's friends of um, sexually abusing him. And he's also seeking 30 million, the same amount that Cassie was um, seeking. So, um, Good heavens. Okay. So he is saying, because I read it in the Daily Mail and then I got so excited then I stopped reading it. So anyway, he is saying that, uh, you know, Diddy um, who describes himself. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to bother to that. I just got his name. I got Rodney. I got his name and I got P. Diddy. I got their names. Okay, so I'm going to rock and roll. <laughs> okay. I'm